What's up guys, three goat selling hacks you need to know. I'm not gonna waste your time, let's get into it. Tip number one, and it has to do with Jordan 1s. Now maybe Jordan 3s, Jordan 4s, but particularly Jordan 1s, especially the bigger sizes, sizes 11 through 14, this always happens. Always double check this one thing before you send it into goat. And that is the back heel. So what happens is, a lot of the time, this back heel part will rub against this white part of the box. So we get it on both sides, right here and here. And when it rubs against it, nothing to do with you, not your fault. That's the way you bought it. You just open up the shoe and it just happens to be a little marked up or a little creased or there's little markings. And sometimes you'll get some of like the little dust from the paper. Sometimes you'll get little scratches. The best thing you should do, make sure your hands are clean and just kind of rub it lightly to form it one way and you can really double check to make sure that it's actually good to go. Now here, there's a light scratch on the back. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Light scratch, not too bad. And you can see there's even some glue here. What's going on there? That's another thing too, is that sometimes go, they say there's scuff, so there's something wrong. You have no control over the quality of some of these Jordans that are out there. Let's see the other side. And there seems like little scratches, not too bad, but we clean that off a little bit. It's smooth. Also depends on your Jordan one and what you're selling. Let's see the other shoe and see how this one looks. And showing the back, you can see a little scratch up here up top, kind of rubbing that one way and see if that helps a little bit. Yeah, you can see that it did rub. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that goat is gonna find that and say, this is scuffed up, this is ruined. I don't know what they're gonna say, but at least on your end, you're double checking it. You're kind of um, going through the back and see the heel. But that's usually one of the signs that you should be checking before you send in your Jordan 1. Now when I put them back into the box, I usually have this part of the paper cover the back heel so it doesn't move around and rub when I send it in. Kind of keeps that part clean, just like how we had it. Bring this part up. We're gonna put the other shoe in and then we're gonna use this back part to cover the heel, cover the front, move this over on the paper, keep that covered and we should be good to go there. Anybody else have any issues on the back heel? Leave me a comment below. But that's tip number one. It should save you some time. So go tip number two. This one has been causing many people problems. Selling shoes as damaged box and then goat receives it and they're like, hey, why is this box damaged? And now they want you to give a percentage off from the sale to the buyer even though you specifically stated it was a damaged box. Why does this happen? I'll tell you why because the people receiving it from you to go, they're not checking all the details. They're not checking on there, it says damaged box. Here's what I do, easy fix. So every time I print out that label for the inside of the box, I split it in half and I actually write on there damaged box. It's a little sticky on the back side. I put that on top of the box. So they have to not only see it, they have to peel it off. That's how I know they're actually gonna look at it. If you just peeled off a piece of paper, or unless it's a huge piece of paper, they might just ignore it completely. It gets lost somehow in the shoe box or even in the actual box. So this one, a little sticky on the back side, putting it on top of the box, even if they pull that off, and it damages the box, it doesn't matter because we sold it as a damaged box. Ever since I did this little trick, never happened. Never again did they say, why is this box damaged? Offer a percentage discount. So this little hack has definitely helped me and it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of problems. You also don't wanna have shoes being sent back to you. Last, tip number three. This one's super easy. The bee actually helped me out with this one. All right, in your photos, create an album, Take a picture every time you leave off shoes at UPS of the receipt. You have to have that every single day. Keep a photo album. You'll have the date on there. And because this is what happens. You go to UPS, you take the shoes, and then they give you the receipt. You toss it. It's somewhere in the car. They build up. 
It's taking up a lot of space. You might even lose some of them. You don't want that to happen. But if you actually have photos of it, you have it all stored on your phone, that definitely helps. So in case anything happens, you can go back and check it on your phone. Here's an example of what happened. Goat emailed me and they were like, hey, how come you shipped multiple shoes in one box? And I was super confused. I was like, what are they talking about? They don't have combined shipping. I know StockX does offer it, uh, but Goat doesn't have that option. I've been selling on Goat for many years. So I was really confused about this email. I have it here on the email. I blocked out the names, but at least I can read it to you. Hey, Glenn. And our team has notified us that you have recently shipped out to us multiple orders into one big package. We do not allow users to ship packages like this, which is why you were given a shipping label for each order. This is what really got me. We are not responsible for any lost items if they are not shipped out to us properly. Now what was this shoe? Mochas. I sold the mochas for over 600 plus. They're not responsible. If shoes get lost somehow or they're shipped with another pair, I don't know why they would anyway when all I have are the uh, single boxes so they don't even fit in, in one big package. But if mochas got lost, it's like, hey, we're not responsible. Now if someone has a new pair of mochas after that, hmm. Should this happen again, we will take further steps in regards to your account that may lead to suspension and or revoking your seller privileges. I emailed them, I asked them, well, which orders are we talking about? I later found out they were mochas, but can you give me some of the tracking? Can I get the order numbers? What's going on here? He said, thanks for reaching out to us. Here are the two orders that we're reaching out to you. The tracking for the items, which pertains to, here's the numbers, here's the tracking. So I showed them on email, took a picture of the drop-off package receipt from UPS. How can they be in one box when I have multiple tracking numbers and they were keyed in from UPS, dropped off three different packages, not two in one or three in one. The response is actually kind of funny. Uh, looks like the tracking for order blank did not update and we received the shoes with order. Here we go, the numbers. Again, this is simply a warning should this continue to happen. Why would it happen? I followed the instructions correctly. UPS also backs up that with the receipt. So my tip for tip number three, take a photo. That'll always be the backup. You don't wanna lose any of these receipts, but if they're all in one photo album on your phone, you'll have that every single time. So quick little recap. Tip number one, especially Jordan ones, look out for the back. Don't let the heel rub against the box. Usually happens sizes 11 through 13, 14, probably even the bigger sizes. Tip number two, leave that little paper in there. Somehow stick it to the box. Damaged box, I'm selling it as damaged. Don't send me an email telling me that, hey, there's a damaged box here, send a discount. It's not gonna happen. Tip number three, take a photo, UPS drop off receipts, have them stored on your phone. That will help you keep everything organized in case anything like this happens. We're gonna send you some emails and ask you why did something weird happen? At least you have all of that ready to back you up. Hope you enjoyed this goat selling video. Those are my three tips. Let me know in the comments below anything that I didn't cover or maybe some other tips that people should know about. Maybe I can do an updated version and because I know there's some weird things that has happened throughout the years for many sellers out there. For me, those are the top three that I think will save you some time. Thanks for watching this video. Like it if you like it. Follow me on Instagram at Hacks. I'll see you in the next one. Go out and get it.